We are just four months away from the biggest trial of 2023, the doomsday couple, Lori and Chad Daybell. Lori and Chad are facing multiple murder charges. First, the murder of Lori's children, Tylee and JJ, who were found buried in Chad's backyard. They are also implicated in the murder of Chad's prior wife, Tammy, less than two weeks before their own wedding in Hawaii. But the alleged motive is not clear. Were they lovers who wanted to be alone together with insurance money? Or did Lori believe Chad was the prophet and together they were going to lead the 144,000? Did Lori believe her children were zombies? And what is it going to be like when Chad and Lori are reunited in court during the murder trial? Tonight, the latest from today's big hearing, and we will speak live to JJ's grandparents who were in Idaho today for Lori's court appearance. But when you have a defendant playing to the cameras inside the court and outside of the court, that is not the media, that's the defendant. I'm Vinnie Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. Great to have you with us. Let's start here. I want to start here tonight. Trials in the United States of America are public. We have public trials. It's a big part of our democracy. You get accused of a crime, government's got to prove it beyond any and all reasonable doubt in front of everyone, anyone. You know, you can go down to your local courthouse, whether it's you want to look at traffic court, it's open. You want to go to Superior Court to watch some criminal trials. It's open. You want to go uh, to federal court. The courtrooms are open. We, as Americans, can go down to our courthouse or we can travel to another state and go to a courthouse and watch what is happening because our, tr our trials are public. It is, it's a branch of our government. And I said our government. Okay, and, and the transparency that needs to take place inside a courtroom is crucial. Now, let's talk about Court TV, what we do here. What do we do? Well, let's say, for instance, you can't get to the trial. You can't go to the courthouse or the courthouse is too far away or you, you have other responsibilities uh, at certain times so you can't go see what our third branch of government is doing. Well, we become your eyes and ears and give you an unfiltered look at what's happening in the courtroom because you get to listen to the witnesses, hear the arguments, see the evidence. And what does this do? Like, what does this do at the end of the day? Think about where we are right now in this country. Has there ever been a, a, a moment or a time in your lifetime, certainly not in mine, where there's been more mistrust in our government so much mistrust and let's not forget that the judicial branch is part of the government so when ordinary folks citizens members of the community get to see and hear what's happening in a courtroom and then you see the result of that case, of that trial, of that hearing, all of a sudden, there's a little more trust in what is happening. It's not a secret deal in a back room. You're seeing justice happen, but you have to actually see it and hear it to trust it. Now, I wanna talk about the story we're talking about this hour, which, which began as a search for missing children. There they are, JJ and Tylee. They were missing. That's what this story began as. And this is a story where you had people locally in Idaho, people in Arizona, people around the country, people around the world who were worried about these children, who were much more concerned about these children than their own mother was. Think about that. A community in, in, in Fremont County that became invested in, in trying to find 
these missing children? What happened to them? Where are they? That's what this story began as. That's how we started covering it here on Closing Arguments. Now we know where we are in this story. It's a trial of J.J. and Tylee's mother, Lori Daybell, and her husband, Chad. They're on trial for the murder. So when you think about this trial and, and the public trial that they will have, um, one of the questions is how many people will get to see it, to understand the evidence and then understand the verdict when it happens. Well, anyone who's going to be close to Boise, Idaho, who will probably have to stand online and get a number to get inside the courtroom will see it. But the other question is, will you see it? And, and that's a, a product of whether or not um, cameras are permitted in the courtroom. And today there was a hearing um, out in, in, in Idaho about whether or not you, me, the rest of the country will be able to see what happened uh, to these children and hear the evidence and find out if it was the ultimate betrayal in trust. Um, the judge, Judge Boyce, will have to make that decision, and he did speak today after listening to both sides talk about it. And what's a little shocking here is that Lori's attorneys don't want the cameras in, and then the prosecution joined in that. I'm a former prosecutor, so I didn't quite understand that because I knew when I was a prosecutor, I worked for the people. I wanted to be as transparent as possible. I work for you. I want you to see what I do. Make sure I'm doing my job and, and understanding what I'm doing day in and day out. You pay my salary, right? That was my attitude. I, I, I'm not sure why the prosecutor is concerned here, but you know, It'll be up to the judge to make a decision. So I want you to hear uh, what Judge Boyce had to say today about that very issue. So I consider this issue uh, needs to be under advisement because it will result in a ruling regardless of a uh, future effect on how these proceedings take place and it needs instruction on what we will or won't allow in terms of cameras and like other parties and report for the future proceedings. Uh, I'll be considering that both in the context of pre-trial motions and the trial itself. Uh, I'll carefully consider these issues that have been raised and the court will show a decision. And as you know, those of you who watch Court TV, there are different rules in different jurisdictions about cameras, when they can be in, when they can't, et cetera. Uh, and the judge will decide whether pre-trial hearings will be on or the trial. And, and the judge will make that decision, uh, obviously. But that decision will have an impact uh, one way or the other. One way is the impact could be that, yeah, we'll get to see what happens and we'll understand the verdict at the end. Or um, you'll get a lot of secondhand information from reporters and maybe you'll understand maybe you won't um we've covered trials like that as well we'll see we'll see uh but two people who will be there will be there inside that courtroom for all of this our special guests joining us tonight in rexburg idaho are the grandparents of jj vallow k and larry woodcock are with us uh k and larry great great to see you tonight you're out in idaho um what was today like for you, um, uh, being there? Hi, Vinny. Thanks for having us on. Um, we drove 1,800 miles to be here today for this hearing. Uh, we felt it was important enough to take on that little journey to, to be here for it. Um, we definitely want it televised. Um, I s can see where they're concerned about tainting the jury pool. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if that's the major concern that, that, that they're all up in arms about, I mean, I think a negotiation could be to not air pretrial hearings and just air the trial. Now, I understand we all do want to see uh, each uh, 
hearing publicly. However, the really, to us, and this is us, to us, it's just the trial. We need our family to see it back in Louisiana and Texas. Um, we, we have met many, many people uh, throughout our world um, that want to hear this, that want to see it, and we, we want this to be aired. But um, honestly, after hearing what Judge Boyce said today about it, it's like he's already leaning towards not having cameras. And that, that's, not, that's a very unsettling feeling to us. I could understand. I absolutely could. You know, uh, Vinny and Kamasa Bash, yeah, how you feel. <clears throat> Vinny, I think this whole hoopla was brought on 100% by the defense attorney's lack of ability, of their ability to manage Lori. And if they think it's going to get any better, they better learn the lesson from the last. Uh, uh, court hearing because Lori is not going to change. Lori thinks she's on the Miss American pageant right now. And as far as as the TVs, I am 100% in favor of the TVs in there. It has never bothered anybody before. The, the defense uh, allowed it to be. In fact, they're the ones that wanted it. And for, for them to all of a sudden say, oh, well, we we can't uh, have TVs in the court is ridiculous because they can't manage the woman that they're trying to defend. I, I, I agree with you, Larry, that this, it's, it's not about the cameras, it's about what happened to JJ. It's about what happened to Tylee and it's how um, she reacted and what he did. That's how this whole thing started. This isn't about um, the, the, the media, the cameras, or anyone else talking about this doing anything. It's based upon actions and reactions. There were two children that were missing, and there was one mother who couldn't care less, who couldn't care less while millions of people around the country right. were more concerned about those children uh, then it, here she is. This is this is when her children are missing, and she's just having a good old time down in in Hawaii. Uh, thank thank goodness for Nate over at East Idaho News tracking her down, doing an unbelievable job. And the whole time, this is where they were. And and I know this is not easy for you to think about and, and watch, but they were buried in his backyard, and she's strolling around Hawaii like nothing is wrong, um, and not even looking for him. And that, and to me that is. That is what made the story what it is. Uh, the story will be covered one way or the other. It, 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 it is what it is. The, 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 the reason is because of the investment of the public, because there's whenever, I, and I've covered stories like this before, when there's a missing child and mom is not looking for that child and mom is lying about where that child is, that's when the community gets together and says, well, wait a minute. You know, we collectively have, an, have a, um, well, look at that smile from last time. We collectively have, have, a, have a mission that we need to protect children when they're not being protected by their own parents. And that's what was happening here. So tell me about, so you, you drove out there. Um, when it's time for this trial to happen, I guess you're going to drive out and you're going to just lock down for three months? You know, Vinny, the, the drive out is really a, uh, a, a drive that allows Kay and I privacy to visit, to enjoy the countryside, and to see the beautiful uh, area of this country and how wonderful it, it is. And to get our minds off of this, you know, you just simply said, this is about the kids. You look on anything that we've ever said, it's based on where are the kids, where are the kids, where are the kids. Now, it's it's about when can I bury my, my grandkids? I, 
that's all I'm asking the court is is when will they allow Kay and I some closure? When will they allow our family some some closure? And the court is going to do what the court is going to do. I have full confidence in the prosecution, the DA's office, everybody associated, the sheriff's office here, the the police here are just totally amazing. And all we want at this point is is give us our my boy. My little boy's been in a damn freezer for three years. And come on, two years, I'm sorry. And just just let us get some closure there. You know, if if, if they're convicted, which I, I really believe they will be, I don't think they're going to get the death sentence. And to be honest, Kay and I have had many discussions about this. Our families had discussion about this. And honestly, if they put them in jail for the rest of their lives and there's no parole, we are happy with that. I, I, I just won't, at this point, give Kay and I and our families, our friends, just give us some closure. The wonder, the wonderful people that have been associated with this since day one. I, I'm not, if, I, I don't think they're going to get the death penalty. Personally, if they said tomorrow they want to do a plea bargain and they want to spend the rest of their life in jail without the possibility of parole, give it to them, let's shut it down and let us take care of our grandchildren. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, to answer, we will be there, God willing, every day in court absolutely. and, and um, with cameras or without cameras, we will be there. But all of our family can't be here. All of um, extended family, friends, supporters, all over the world cannot be there and they need to see this just like we need to be there be here for for a child so yeah we intend on being there that's never changed and we will be have, have there been a lot of discussions now i i presume that you'll be on the witness list and you'll potentially testify in the case We, yes, it's possible, but um, as we'll see. we have just laid it out and see, I don't know what really we could bring to the, to the table uh, for them. I, I do have a concern that maybe the defense does not want us in the courtroom because, because we have been the spokesperson throughout this ordeal for you know, over two years now, and I think the jury would probably be very sympathetic to us, but so I don't know. I don't know how all this really works because I've never been, thankfully, have never been a part of this type of, of uh, adjudication process, and I, I don't know. We just have to wait and see. There's so many questions in the air still. But I hope not. I want to be in, inside the courtroom. I don't want to be sitting out in a in a waiting room to be called for for something. Well, um, I hope that both of you get to be in there as victims. Victims should have rights uh, in our in cases, and I've seen many cases that we have covered where the families of the victims, even if they're on the witness list, are permitted to be inside the courtroom. Um, and, I, and I hope and pray that you'll be there because I know that's extremely important to you and, and to all victims to have the opportunity to be there. Uh, and secondly, I, I hope the cameras are there um, for your extended family, for everyone who uh, has said a prayer or has taken part in a search uh, for, the, for the children and, 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 and for us to see our third branch of government at work and making sure that we 
when the verdict comes, we understand it and, and we trust it. But uh, Kay and Larry, always a pleasure. I know it's another long day for you, but I know you have each other. So uh, th those days are, 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 I'm sure, filled with uh, as much joy as possible under the circumstances uh, as you go through this journey together. Thanks so much. Thank you, Benny.